Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, and I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This is another video in my Proofs and Differential Calculus series. And uh, in this video, we're going to go ahead and prove that the derivative of e to the x power is actually itself e to the x power. And as simple as that statement may seem, the proof itself is actually somewhat difficult. Um, well, maybe not difficult. It's a little detailed. How's that? How's that? As with most proofs uh, for derivatives, you have to know everything about limits, and also you should be very familiar with the le limit definition of a derivative, or in other words, the true definition of a derivative. So let's jump into the proof, and by the way, this proof is going to require a couple detailed little steps prior to actually getting into the proof. So we're going to state a lemma and a definition right at the beginning of our proof. So here we are starting the proof with actually a definition from uh, calculus. Uh, it's in calculus that you actually learn that e itself is the number, it's a very special number, that, such that when I raise it to a power, well, e to that power minus 1 over that power will approach 1 as the power approaches 0. Or in other words, this is sort of like the difference quotient, right? It's it, You're saying that uh, e to h minus 1 over h is equal to 1, and that is sort of like uh, the derivative itself. So it's a very special number such that the derivative at 0 is equal to 1, and, in, and of course it's an exponential function. So we're going to use that within our um, our proof here, and another thing that we have to uh, use is the following lemma. And I'll write the lemma out in red along with the proof of it. Uh, this basically says if we have a function, an exponential function, and we want to take the derivative of that exponential function, the derivative itself will equal f prime at 0 times the original exponential function. So the derivative of an exponential is its own derivative evaluated at 0 times the original exponential function. We're going to prove this first, and then that will help us prove that the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So we're going to start this proof just like we would with any type of proof. We start with our supposition. Our supposition is that, let me highlight it, that f of x is equal to b. So we'll just start with that supposition. We want to work our way to the fact that the derivative is equal to f prime of 0 uh, times b to the x power. So let, uh, I didn't mean to start writing in black here, but that's okay. Let f of x equal b to the x. Uh, let's say then... Uh, f prime at x must equal the limit as h is going to 0 of, and now we'll go ahead and use the derivative definition here, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. It's the limit as h approaches 0 of that. And we'll go ahead and I will pause the video while I write the next step, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of, and we just inserted x plus h into our function and also x into our function. So this is nothing new to you. The next step is actually going to look a little tricky. A lot of students don't like it because they think that um, it's cheating. It's not cheating at all. I, I have to first justify that one. Both of these terms have a b to the x in them, so I'll factor those out. I'll end up with a b to the h minus 1 all over h. And then, here's the step that most students will argue initially with, I'm going to factor the b to the x outside. And I'll tell you why I could do that, because the limit itself is as h approaches 0, not as x does something, but as h approaches 0. And that's That allows us, since x is not wandering, that allows us to factor out b raised to the x power, because it doesn't rely upon h. And we have to leave everything else with h's on the inside there. As an interesting side note before we continue forward, I want you to notice the similarity between this statement up here and this statement right here. They're actually the same statement. The only difference is instead of b, I have e. Right? So it's a, they're very close to each other. Now I know where I want to go with this. I'm saying that if we have a function equals b to the x, then we have to show that the derivative equals f prime at 0 times b to the x. We already have the b to the x, so I actually want this factor here to be f prime at 0. So let's go ahead and note that 
f prime is 0, so let me write that down. Note, f prime at 0 is equal to, and I'm going to do that limit definition, um, and I'll write it off to the side, the limit as x approaches a1, where f of x minus f of a is the numerator, and x minus a is in the denominator. So that would be the derivative at a. So I'm going to use that form of the derivative here. And of course, that simplifies a little bit. I'll go ahead and write that in, which simplifies even further to be the limit as x approaches 0 of b to the x minus 1 over x. That's what f prime of 0 actually is. Well, if you notice, allowing x to actually just call x h in this case up here, which I call star. So we're going to let x equal h in that last statement we made. We get that the f prime, or the derivative of f at 0, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, b to the h, right? Because we're letting x just, we're calling x h. It's just a different symbol. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So we see that this is actually a just a notation for f prime at 0. Notice that this notation is exactly the same as the notation I'm highlighting right now. So these two notations are exactly the same, which means that that highlighted bit in that top is equal to f prime of 0. So I'll write that down. Thus, f prime of x must equal, uh, we have b to the x, and that second bit right there is just, as we've just proven, f prime of 0 which is what we wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little box here. Just say we've proven that lemma. Now we're going to use that lemma to help us with the rest of this problem. Now remember, our ultimate goal is to find out what the derivative of e to the x is. So I'll just go ahead and uh, maybe write it. Mm, uh, you know what, this page is not too clean. Let me get a new page and I'll write it on a new page here. Hence. If we let g of x equal e to the x, then g prime of x is going to be e to the x times, well, g prime evaluated at 0. However, by the definition that we have for the constant e, um, the slope of the function e to the x at 0 has to be 1. In other words, g prime at 0, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h, must be 1. Right? That's our by our definition. If we go back a page, we can see that. And we can see right here, this is this is the definition I'm talking about, that the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h is actually 1, which is what we wanted. Let's go back to the other page. Therefore, it's pretty easy to see at this point that g prime of x is equal to e to the x times 1, but that's okay. Remember, g was e to the x, the derivative is e to the x. We are done. QED. Oh, the